it's all stuffed uh, with all my four cards and my sound system, my two discs. I'm done with the hardware. So compared to Windows 98 and DOS, uh, Windows XP is a piece of cake. Uh, so the first thing is to restart with my tool and make uh, the WinXP partition active and to hide the other ones. Oh, smart enough, it sees the three partitions. So on that one, and then we want to keep the fat. Setup will complete in approximately 39 minutes. Ah, I remember that problem. So that's the only hiccup with XP. It has a problem with the display driver, the video driver. Just pressed OK. Woohoo! And it's a bug in the driver, and the fix, if I remember well, is to go immediately to properties, settings, advanced. Troubleshoot and then you move it one notch back. And that fixes it mostly. Now we can go do settings and grow it. Alright, so that's a better, bigger Windows XP. Yeah, so it still has the glitches. Get to the properties. Then wiggle it a bit. Okay. And there you go. And then it's fixed. And look at that was even able to get a browser that sort of kind of works on this Pentium 2. It's, it's, it's remarkable actually, I can do YouTube. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, the latest version of Chameleon, written K-Million, this guy over there. And Sea Monkey works quite well too, but not not as well for YouTube. And I have about uh, 0.2 frames per second. So it makes you realize how much horsepower a modern browser takes. It's a lot. All right, the web is browsable slowly on the Pentium 2 with uh, 500 meg of memory. All right, we're done with the XP. Okay, last hooray, we're going to install Linux, uh, which should actually pick up all the other operating system and allow us to multi-boot. And I use uh, CrunchBank, uh, the version 10, because it's the last one that fits in a CD. I can boot straight out of it. So off we go. Machine is set up to boot from CD. Alright, crunch bang. No fear, graphical install. Okay, here comes the first trick question. Uh, how does it want to partition the disk? I'm going to try guided use entire disk. So we'll trust the installer. This is the Seagate and this is the Quantum, so it should be this one. I hope 
it's going to tell me if that partition is on it. And make my life simple, all files in one partition. Okay. Uh, yes, phew! And it confirm I chose the right thing. In Linux we trust, continue. Alrighty. Alright, hello, welcome to CrashBang Linux. This is an optional post installation script. Hit any key to continue. Okay, oh, that might not work. Yep, 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 yep. It couldn't get any of the updates because the repository has changed, it's not maintained anymore. It's in, it's in slash etc slash apt slash sources.list. When there's something wrong in Linux, there's always a way to change it. There we go. And the problem is... That's this one. That's this repository has been changed. And it's now archive.abn.org. So same line as the one from above, which I should have copied, with archive instead of FTP. And I have to comment out all the other lines. Okay, so now that we have edited the repository, it's sudo apt.get update. There we go. Much better, now it's finding the updates. Alright. Wow, I finally got it to display on the whole screen and it was a bit of a battle. Uh, because basically you have to force it to work on that resolution and that size. Well, the first thing you have to do is generate in xor.conf configuration file because there is none by default in the modern Linuxes. So you have to do sudo xorg and if you do dash configure it's unhappy because it tells you you're already running you're already running uh, the x terminal which I am so you have to do sudo xorg new display one dash configure and it creates a xr.conf.new in the root folder. There it is. Then you want to uh, copy that one with super user privilege to where it should be and it tells you user.share-x11-xorg.conf dot d and then you have to rename it xorg.conf so once you have put it at the right place you have to edit it and to find the right edit and the first thing I did is I zapped the depth 24 so it never goes into depth 24 and I added a depth 16 section and then that was not enough to and I had to modify the monitor I had this whole bunch of stuff that I found uh, on the web uh, which has all the definition of a high resolution 1024 times 768 screen and once you do that you refer to it in the screen section Dolch monitor 
and then finally you save this thing you log out you log back in and it finally uses the whole screen now there's one more thing you need to do uh, because it, the, one of the reasons it uses so little memory is that it does away with a lot of the menus and the, uh, there's no desktop. But instead it has this very convenient uh, shortcuts which are written here, which work with the super uh, key, which is supposed to be the Windows key, like in this keyboard. This key, but of course on the Dolch, there is no Windows key to be had that wasn't invented yet so you need to uh, go and create this file which is called .xmodmap and uh, put these magic lines in it which basically remap the windows key to I remap it to the right alt so now if I do right alt T it works as intended and it will bring me a terminal and uh, right alt F. that will be a file browser etc etc very nicely done compact version of Linux the beauty of this uh, distribution is that it uses zero resources it uh, is running on a grand total of 57.6 uh, megabytes of RAM of course when you add other windows it will it will grow but still that's remarkable it runs super well and uses no resources uh, no try to get windows 7 to run into less than 2 gigabyte good luck with that so we're done our dolch can now support all the os's and all the cards so let's check that it reboots in everything. Start with NT. Okay, we have Windows NT. We have try Windows 98. Ooh. Well, maybe. Ooh. Uh. Ouch. That is not that good. Alright. Well, no such thing as Windows 98. We're not quite done yet. Okay, let's try if it boots XP. XP. Okay, we have XP with its little screen glitch. Okay, I solved my Windows 98 booting problem, but um, stupidly I didn't press the record on the camera when I was doing it, so I didn't get the footage. So let me try to uh, recreate it for you if I can. What had happened is that this one was active. Let me try to set active. Okay and this one was visible and hide partition something like that it got into that state where it was trying to boot to Windows 98 but the active one was Windows XP and I'll show you what that does when you're in that state uh, let's apply Okay, so let me see if I have screwed myself up again. So let's try to boot Windows 98. I think I, yeah, so I recreated the problem. So then you try to do a deer on C and cannot even do anything. I change to D, whoop. Um, oh, I try D. Windows command.com 
And sure enough, here I was there. And so what has happened is that actually, if I do a dir of C, this is my window XP partition. And now if I go to D, this is my window 98 partition. The first person that had the flag active becomes C, and then all the other ones get enumerated later. So it just enumerated wrong. Uh, so let's try to fix it again. Sorry about using the partition magic tool. And now let's fix it. Let's make that one the active partition. So Windows 98 will be active. And then let's get those one back to visible. And hide. And it says it will screw up your drive letters but it actually won't because I've made the correct one active so it really doesn't matter yes okay so now we're back in a stable state and Gr Grub should take it from there and make all the changes automatically and we'll now reboot okay and this time if I boot on Windows 98 uh, the state I am should be consistent with the state that Grub expects and we should be out of trouble. Ta-da! There we go, so we got DOS to boot and then if we want to boot Windows 98 uh, we just type win. Okay, so we are working on all cylinders. We can uh, quintuple boot the machine. Uh, so thanks for sticking around for so many videos. Uh, and uh, I'll bet you'll see that guy in the lab uh, very often uh, booted on the OS suitable for the task at hand. Thanks for watching.